By all accounts, we are looking, if we take what's still under the ground into account, we're looking at the largest megalithic site that's ever been created on Earth. Gobekli Tepe is a site that truly boggles the mind, taking us back over 11,000 years to a time when prehistoric peoples demonstrated remarkable capabilities that challenge our understanding of early human civilization. The sudden appearance, 7,000 years before Stonehenge, of a megalithic site that dwarfs Stonehenge, to me that's a mystery and it's really worth inquiring into. Imagine this. Massive stone pillars, each carved from limestone using nothing more than simple stone tools. It's a task that would require not just considerable skill, but a collective effort from a group of people who had yet to discover the wheel or metal tools. These pillars weren't just any stones, they were shaped into T-forms, a design that's unique to Gobekli Tepe, standing up to 5.5 meters tall and weighing up to 20 tons. One of the many ways that Gobekli Tepe, I think, is going to prove to be a game changer is it's going to require us to reconsider uh, our whole dating sequence on megalithic sites around the world. The effort to transport and erect these massive stones without modern technology is nothing short of astonishing. Using levers, ropes and wooden sledges, the people of Gobekli Tepe managed to move these enormous stones over considerable distances a testament to their ingenuity and teamwork. This wasn't a small feat, it required a high level of social organization and cooperation, suggesting that this community was far from the nomadic bands of hunter-gatherers we often imagine. But why did archaeologists tell us for so long hunter-gatherers couldn't do it and we needed agricultural well, populations that could generate well, surpluses that could pay for the yes, specialists that was to... The theory. Instead, they were capable of complex planning and communal effort, likely driven by shared beliefs and common goals. The technological innovation and architectural planning evident in Gobekli Tepe's construction are truly ahead of their time. The precision in the carving and erection of the pillars, along with the thoughtful layout of the site, show an advanced understanding of stone masonry and basic engineering principles. This sophistication challenges the simplistic view we often have of prehistoric societies, revealing a people capable of complex thought and remarkable feats of engineering. When you dive into the story of Gobekli Tepe, you're not just exploring ancient ruins, you're stepping into a world where prehistoric peoples pulled off engineering marvels that would be daunting even by today's standards. Picture this, a community back in the 10th millennium BCE without access to metal tools, the wheel or any form of animal labor, decides to build something extraordinary. They set their sights on massive limestone pillars, each one towering over five meters high and weighing around 10 tons, and they decide to quarry, shape, transport, and erect these giants using nothing but stone hammers, wooden tools, and sheer human will. It's a scenario that might make a modern engineer blink twice. These ancient builders leveraged ingenious methods, likely rolling these colossal stones over logs or dragging them on sleds made from tree trunks, all coordinated by what must have been an incredible communal effort. Just imagine the sight, hundreds of people coming together, each one playing a part in this monumental task. It wasn't just about physical strength, it required a high degree of planning, coordination and social organization, suggesting that these early communities were far more complex than we often give them credit for. And let's talk about the layout of Gubekli Tepe. It wasn't a haphazard arrangement of stones. Gobekli Tepe is a bit more nuanced, you know, we have stone, we have stone circles, we have some interesting astronomical alignments, the world's first perfectly north-south aligned building. These T-shaped pillars were carefully positioned to form circular enclosures, a testament to the builders' advanced planning and knowledge of stonemasonry. They understood the properties of limestone, knew how to quarry large blocks and shape them with precision. The placement of each pillar was intentional, reflecting a deep understanding of geometry and structural engineering. Gobekli Tepe is like a time capsule that's slowly revealing its secrets to us, and among its most captivating mysteries are the potential astronomical alignments hidden within its ancient stone circles. Imagine standing among these massive pillars over 10,000 years ago, looking up at the night sky. Some researchers think that the people who built Gobekli Tepe did more than just admire the stars. They aligned their monumental structures with them. 
The idea that these ancient builders could align their creations with constellations like Sirius or Orion, or mark the solstices and equinoxes, is mind-blowing. It suggests they were not just master builders, but also early astronomers, tracking the heavens with an accuracy that challenges our assumptions about prehistoric peoples. This possibility opens up all sorts of fascinating questions about how and why they did this. If the alignments at Gobekli Tepe were intentional, it could mean that these ancient builders had their own form of astronomical observation, maybe even a basic calendar system. Gobekli Tepe and the lack of evidence for permanent settlement presents a fascinating glimpse into the spiritual life of people over 11,000 years ago. This site, rather than serving as a home or village, appears to have been a significant ceremonial or pilgrimage destination. The absence of typical domestic remains such as extensive cooking hearths or trash pits that would indicate long-term habitation suggests that Gobekli Tepe was not a place where people lived year-round. Instead, it was likely visited by various groups for specific purposes, possibly related to religious or spiritual practices. This realization points to a level of social complexity and spiritual or religious depth that predates the advent of agriculture and settled life, challenging the conventional sequence of societal development. The stone pillars of Gobekli Tepe, carved with an impressive array of reliefs and symbols, are among the earliest known examples of narrative art, offering profound insights into the prehistoric mind. These carvings feature a diverse menagerie of animals, foxes, lions, bulls, snakes, wild boars and birds, each meticulously rendered, suggesting a deep reverence or symbolic significance attached to these creatures. The presence of such carvings indicates not only advanced artistic skills and aesthetic sensibilities, but also suggests these animals held particular meanings for the people who created them. They could represent clan totems, spiritual guides, or mythological stories central to the community's beliefs and rituals. Moreover, the humanoid figures, some of which appear to be depicted wearing animal skins, hint at early forms of shamanistic practices, or the veneration of deities or priests donned in ceremonial garb. These figures could represent intermediaries between the physical world and the spiritual realm, playing crucial roles in the rituals and ceremonies conducted at the site. The abstract symbols found alongside the more representational carvings add another layer of complexity to our understanding of Gobekli Tepe's spiritual significance. These symbols could be early attempts at encoding sacred knowledge, marking significant events, or conveying complex concepts related to cosmology, theology, or social order. The carvings on Gobekli Tepe's pillars, therefore, are not merely decorative, but are deeply imbued with meaning, serving as a tangible connection to the beliefs, rituals, and cosmologies of prehistoric peoples. They provide a window into a world where spirituality was expressed through the medium of stone, and where the natural and supernatural realms were closely intertwined. The story of Gobekli Tepe is like something out of a movie, an ancient site buried under tons of soil and debris around 8000 BCE, only to be rediscovered and shake up everything we thought we knew about the dawn of civilization. This wasn't just a case of a lost city getting swallowed up by the sands of time, it was an intentional act, a massive project that likely took as much effort and organization as the construction of the site itself. Why would a society go through such lengths to bury this place? The theories are as fascinating as they are varied, ranging from ritualistic closure to a strategic move for preservation against natural disasters or even invasions. But here's the kicker. Gobekli Tepe turns the Neolithic Revolution's narrative on its head. The common story is that agriculture kick-started the rise of complex societies and monumental architecture. The, the idea that we, that we come across that another turn of the spade reveals information that causes us to reconsider not just was it hunter-gatherers or agriculturalists, but perhaps something bigger than this is involved. Yet here we have an elaborate complex built by hunter-gatherers long before farming took hold. It suggests that the impulse to gather for religious or ceremonial reasons might have been a driving force behind settling down and forming communities. This discovery forces us to rethink not just the timeline of human history, but the very factors that drive societal development. Gobekli Tepe shows us that hunter-gatherer societies were capable of a level of organization, cooperation, and spiritual expression that we usually only attribute to settled farming communities. It hints at a world where shared beliefs and rituals were the glue that held societies together, potentially paving the way for the transition to a sedentary lifestyle.